Welcome back to another episode of World Tour on Football Manager 2021, where we are now with Spezia in the Italian Serie B. And in today's episode, we are going to play our first two games in charge of Spezia against Virtus and Teller and Pescara. So the first of those games is coming up now. We are currently sitting in fourth in the table, which should be a playoff place. And we can reach up to as high as second, but that relies on both teams above us dropping points. So we're not really likely to get automatic promotion so it looks like it will be the playoffs for us but in today's episode like i said we're going to play the first game against 11th place virtus intella so we should be winning this one let's hope we do so this is the starting lineup and tactic that we are settling on for this first game at virtus intella we're away from home so we're going to play with our fluid counter-attack tactic a 4-3-3 with a defensive midfielder the other two tactics that i've got are a 4-4-2 with wing play and a 5-2-3 I couldn't I, I couldn't even count then 5-2-3 with wing backs and the tactical style of Catanaccio so that's that's more for when we get into Serie A I would say and when we're facing Juve and the the other big Italian teams so today's match is going to be the 4-3-3 formation like I said with the fluid counter-attack and our starting lineup is as follows so we have Vladimiro Falcone in goal uh, three low knees in defence. Merlo, Di Fiore and Romani with Lanzaro, our only permanent player. Then David Coccoluto is in defence midfield. Christian Mincillo, another low knee in centre midfield alongside Nuncio Lella. Adriana Lucidi is at right wing. Alessio Landi, another low knee, is at left wing. And then Emanuele Pecorino is our striker today. 12 substitutes to choose from if we need to make any changes, which is just a godsend. I have to be honest. I'm just going to try and encourage the lads with the team talk and pump my fist and say, come on, lad, show me what you can do to keep our run going. It seems to motivate Filippo Lanzaro, who is the, 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 the one that's our player, isn't he? Yes, he's the only defender that's our player, so that's a positive sign, I guess. Uh, on the bench, incidentally, we do have Pedro Delgado, and you may recall last episode, I was questioning why his shirt said Del G duo or something? I can't, I can't remember what can't remember what it was. Dear 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 Duo is what his shirt says. And I found out that I, that is literally just the, the Chinese pronunciation, I guess, of his name. So here we go. First game in charge of Spezia. Uh, Virus and Teller with two wins in their last five, two defeats as well, and a draw. And we are in some fine form with five wins in our last five games. Hopefully we get another one today as there is a Serie B table. We look pretty safe in fourth base. In fact, there's only nine points up for grabs for, I think it was Citadella who were in fifth place and they're nine points behind us. So barring some sort of disaster, we should be pretty safe for fourth place. But we are incidentally playing in our, our black home game with white shorts. Vincent Teller playing in the, the light blue with white stripes as Alessandrini comes forward with the ball for Virgil Centella. Now it's Tomasoni. It'd be good if we could get a block in here. We're letting them get into the box. Tomasoni, the ball across. And that's just why from Thornton. Thornton. Easy for me to say. Throw in. in the, on the right side of the pitch, it's Mincio. He finds Merlo, the right back, on loan from AC Milan, if I remember correctly. His cross is blocked by Alessandrini. And they've got an, an opportunity to come back at us now with Michelotti on the ball in defence. Terrible pass. Pecorino's through on goal. I think he's offside, though. He's scored. Is it counting? I think it's counting. Emanuele Pecorino, the striker, only his third goal of the season. They must have been playing some someone else up front. Uh, and in my opinion, he's uh, the best out-and-out -out striker that, that we have, which is why he's playing today. And he wasn't offside. I didn't notice the, the defender keeping him on there. Great finish from Pecorino. And we have an early lead. However, it could be short-lived as there is a highlight straight from kickoff. It's Pirello with the ball in defence for Virtus, finds Thomas Sony on the right-hand side. He skips past one of our defenders. He was trying to get back to make up for allowing him pass. And that's a great tackle from Lanzaro. And he clears that. But it's going to come straight back to a Virtus player with Pirello, who started the move off originally. Now it's Thordeson to Piazza. Good block. And then Lella clears it. But it's going to come back into our defence with Thordeson now on the ball. Plays it to the left to Alessandrini. He's going to look to get the ball in the box, I think. Alessandrini plays it back to Thordeson. Bassonio is there, and that's headed over the bar by Bassonio to Merlo with a throw-in. On the right-hand side, deep in the opposition's half, we've got it back now with Lella, who gives it back to Merlo. Another chance to get a ball in the box, possibly. He plays it back to Minshew instead. He does get a ball in. Landy's there with a header, and it's off the bar. Great attempt there. 
just noticing that how how much bigger the attendances are in this Italian Serie B compared to the the Irish league. I mean, it's it's sort of understandable, but it's uh, it's nice to see stadiums full. So we've reached half time in our first game in charge of Spezia, and we are still in the lead by a goal to nil. So just taking a look at how everyone's doing, uh, condition wise, I don't think we need to take anyone off. Ratings wise, not really anyone that I'm too concerned about. Um, Uma Melo is on a six point five. Might have to have keep an eye on him in the second half. We do have a couple of a few right backs on the bench actually that can come on for him. And then Christian Minchillo is on a yellow card, so I'll have to keep an eye on him in centre midfield also but we'll just leave the team as they are as we head in to this second half so almost 75 minutes gone we are going to make a few changes so merlo has actually his ratings got worse he's on 6.4 now and we are going to bring who are we going to bring on i'm going to pause the game so that we don't run out of time because i feel like i might take a little while with this so we're going to bring on jean dominico faidi at right back for omar merlo and then we're also going to take christian mincio off he was on a yellow card don't want to risk him getting sent off. So we'll bring on John Sugergleason in centre midfield as well. Uh, will we, I think we'll change his role up to a... What have we got? We're working with a ball, box-to-box midfielder and a Roman playmaker at the moment. So we'll switch him up to a centre midfielder on defend, I guess, just to add a bit, bit more defensive stability to the side. But with 15 minutes left, I think we'll leave it at those two changes for now. Do we take Landy off? He's also on a yellow card. Got Marchi or Bachi on the bench. You can play there. Yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna bring Bachi on for him or Bachi. I'm not sure how you say that. Maurizio Bachi, and we will confirm the changes and press play. And hopefully we can hold on for the next ten minutes or so. And there is the full time whistle. It's a victory in our first game in charge of Spezia. A nice one goal victory. No goals conceded. They they wanted us to have a, a solid defence, and we've certainly had that today. We've been tested quite a lot. Um, they haven't been very accurate with their shots though so uh, a nice one nil victory in our first game and that result obviously doesn't move us anywhere in the table but it does put us just six points behind second place so Vincenzis lose another two games and things could start to get interesting we're also only four points behind third place um, not that that really means anything apart from I'm guessing it probably helps our seeding in the playoffs so just before we get into the Pescara game we are about to hopefully make a, a pretty interesting signing. So we're, we're going to sign one of our former players, Philip Clark from Shamrock Rovers. We've made a, it's a bit of an extravagant amount of money, £750,000, I think it was, plus a 5% percentage of profit ne of next sale clause in the contract. But he he looks a very decent player, even for, for Spezia. So we're bringing him in because obviously we're relying on a, a low knee to play in one of the centre midfield positions at the moment. It'd just be nice to, to get someone else in. But of course, he won't be joining until July, so fingers crossed he'll be joining a, a Serie A side. But if not, he'll he'll definitely be able to do a job for us in Serie B next season, provided he signs. He hasn't agreed yet. We have done contracts and everything, and he accepted all that, but we, we haven't finalised the transfer. So here we go, second game in charge of Spezia. We are hoping for Empoli and Vincenza to drop points in this game. Rick. Empoli are playing against 8th place Kiev of Verona. Vincenza are playing against the 2nd bottom of the table Monopoly. So that's looking less likely that that's going to happen. But of course, if Vincenza do win, we still can theoretically catch up to them. But that's going to be a big ask considering the, the goal difference, well, difference between us two. So we're hoping for Vincenzo and Empoli to lose and we of course need to do our bit by beating Pescara who aren't that far away from us in the table. They're seventh. I'm not sure if that's a playoff place or not but um, it, it could be or they could find themselves in a the playoff place if they, they manage to pick up some more points in the next few games. So we're going to we're gonna make a change to the starting lineup. So Omar Melo is going to drop to the bench. Jan Domenico Faidi is going to come on for him at right back. Um, Melo didn't play too great for us in the last game we're going to switch Faidi's rule to being a, a fullback on support as well as he's more comfortable playing there and we'll switch the other fullback to a fullback on support as well we're also going to switch Landy to being a winger on support I honestly haven't looked at any of the uh the, the rules and duties that these guys are are best at playing for the last game so we've made those changes um did think about taking Romani off because he didn't have a, a great game last time out but we'll we'll keep him on for this one so just the one change made compared to the last game so capacity crowd here at our home ground I need to learn the name of our home ground I'm not quite sure what it is but we are ready to play against the Pescara side who have lost 
three of the last five games, only one win in their last five. A victory today obviously takes could take us to within one point of Empoli, depending on how they do in their game as the players come out onto the pitch. We are in our white shirt and black shorts today. Pescara playing in green. Free kick for Pescara in a dangerous position. sarah has got the ball from the free kick. And he plays it back to the free kick taker, Bernasconi. Now it's Sarah. Now Bernasconi again. It sounds very similar to the former Italian president. Um, I think that might be Berlusconi though. Serra with the ball to Segre. Now Butic. Back to Serra. Slow build up play. Patient build up play. Giving it away. Landy on the attack for us now. Can he get a nice ball through to Pecorino? He certainly can. Pecorino through on goal. Pecorino shoots and he scores again. Second game in a row. Emanuele Pecorino. Why is he not been playing for Spezia all season? That's his fourth goal of the season. As I said, two in two games. And we have taken the lead here. Just as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, Vincenza have taken the lead in their game against Monopoly, which of course would mean our hopes of automatic promotion would officially pretty much be over. Throw in on the right-hand side, Faidi finds Lucidi. Back to Mincio. Can he get a ball into the box? He can. Lela's there. Lela with a shot, and that's just over the bar. The goalkeeper looked like he'd probably save that if it was on target. As I've just noticed, Empoli are a goal down to Chievo Verona. That is very helpful for us as we reach half-time at 1-0. So just taking a look at how everyone's doing condition-wise and rating-wise, I think everything is fine. So we'll not make any changes. We'll just head straight back into the second half and we will hope and pray that we can continue winning and that Empoli can continue losing. And hopefully Monopoly can score a goal against Vincenza too. That would just make it a perfect day. As I say, that Monopoly have just scored a goal against Vincenza. It's one all in that game. That would be fine. A draw would be fine. We'd still be in with a shout. So 75 minutes gone. I'm going to see if we need to take anyone off. We've got Di Fiore having a bit of a stinker in, at centre-back on a, on a 6.5. We'll bring on Christian Toffoli for him. And then Lucidi's on a yellow card at right wing. So who do we bring on for him? We're going to bring on Lorenzo Marchi for him at right wing. And we'll just make those two changes and confirm there. And there's a chance for Pescara. Please don't do this. Bernasconi with the corner. Carlo Butic has scored. Pescara, it's one all. Ah, that's annoying. The other teams drop points. Empoli have just equalised in the other game. Um, I'm going to demand more. I'm going to push up to positive. This could all go wrong now. Liberati with the ball at left back for Pescara. We're not, we're not closing him down. Obviously, we're we're playing more of a counter-attacking style of football, so you wouldn't expect us to, as D'Amico is advancing forward with it. And he skips past our defensive midfielder like he's not even there. D'Amico... There's, there's a lot of our players back, but D'Amico is still not being challenged. Ball in, and Butic has nearly scored again. It's off the bar and out for a goal kick. At this rate, it looks like we'd be lucky to get away with a draw today. So a 1-1 draw, and I think I've just seen the, the, the Vincenza score, and it looks pretty mad. Yep, Vin, Vincenza lost by three goals to one to the team that were second bottom, Monopoly. That's helped them climb out of the relegation zone, actually. Empoli coming back from a goal down to beat Kiev of Verona, which means Empoli are now in the automatic promotion place. There's two games left, so six points up for grabs. We aren't going to be able to get an automatic promotion. If we win both games, we're going to rely on Empoli to get heavily beaten in both of their games just to have a, a sniff of it. And Vincenzo are only a point behind Empoli, so it looks like it is going to be the playoffs for us. So looking ahead to the next episode, bearing in mind that where it's very unlikely we're going to be able to challenge for automatic promotion, I'll it'll probably it's probably going to be the playoff games that I'm going to bring you. But if I, I will play the Pisa game, and if it looks like if if Empoli get absolutely smashed by eight goals to nil or something crazy like that, I might bring you the final game of the season as well. But it's not very likely. So next episode will probably be the playoff games to try and find our way back up to Serie A. But that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to get all my content when it comes out. Hit the notification bell to stay notified and I'll see you next time.